Okay, so at number one, I have the right triangular prism to mm. the right, okay? Angles A and D are right angles with AB equal to 6, AC equal to 8, and AD equal to 12. What is the length of edge BE? Well, BE is a lateral edge, and all of the lateral faces are rectangles. So this is a rectangle here on the back. A, C, F, E is a rectangle, and then on the right side here, F, C, E is a rectangle. And since all the, the lateral faces are rectangles, each lateral edge is congruent. So if this is 12, C to F is also 12, and B to E is also 12. So the answer to number 12 is 2. In number 13, which expression represents the volume in cubic centimeters of the cylinder represented below? Volume formula is pi r squared h. So given a diameter of 12, we have a radius of 6. So plugging it in, we have pi times 6 squared times 27, which gives us a product here, 36 times 27, of 972 pi, which is answer choice 3. 14. The base of a right pentagonal prism has an area of 20 square inches. If the prism has an altitude of 8, determine and state the volume of the prism. Volume for any prism is the area of the base times the height. Now, since it gave you the area, it says the base has an area of 20 square inches, we substitute 20 for the base area and then substitute a height of 8. And 20 times 8 gives us a volume of 160 inches cubed. In 15, a candle maker uses a mold to make candles like the one shown below. The height of the candle is 15, so I'm going to note that. And the circumference of the candle at its widest measure is... 37.710 centimeters. Use modeling to approximate how much wax to the nearest cubic centimeter is needed. So how much wax to the nearest cubic centimeter is volume. And volume equals one-third pi r squared h. We're not given the radius, but we're told the circumference is 37.710. Circumference is equivalent to 2 pi r, so substituting 37.710 equivalent to 2 pi r, divide by 2 pi, those cancel out, and we have a radius of 37.710. I'm going to leave it exact. Okay, and we'll do the calculation on the calculator over here. So volume equals one-third pi times 37.710 over 2 pi squared times 15. Moving to the calculator. Let's clear that so I can quit. I'm going to do... 2 pi first, get that answer, and then 37.710 divided by the answer above to keep it exact. Now I need to square that, and then times a third, times pi, times 15. And we end up with 565.813. It wants it to the nearest cubic centimeter. So since to the right of the 5 is an 8, it's going to round to 566 cubic centimeters. Okay, number 16. New streetlights will be installed along a section of highway. The posts for the streetlights 
will be 8.4 meters tall and made of aluminum. The posts are cylindrical and have a hollow core. So let's draw that. So here's the cylinder. the hollow core, so another cylinder inside. Okay. Um, have a hollow core with aluminum of three centimeters thick and an outer diameter of 63.2 centimeters. So since we are, have two different units of measurement, I'm going to change this 8.4 meters to be centimeters. Okay, so multiply by 100, it would be 840 centimeters. So my height is 840 centimeters. And that's the height of both cylinders. Then moving or using that statement, the aluminum is three centimeters thick and we have an outer diameter of 63.2. So that means the outer radius, divide that by two, is 31.6 centimeters. So this outer radius, whoops. I just want to go to the edge of that circle. Right here, we have a radius of 31.6. Since our aluminum, okay, is three centimeters thick, the inner radius, I'll draw it to this side, that inner radius, 31.6 minus three, gives us an inner radius of 28.6 for the smaller cylinder. So the smaller cylinder has a radius of 28.6. The larger cylinder has a radius of 31.6. Both having the same height of um, 840 centimeters. And this is, both of these radii are in terms of centimeters as well. Okay. How much aluminum is needed to make each pole? How much aluminum is volume? Okay, so we find the volume of the larger cylinder and subtract the larger or the inner or smaller cylinder that will give us the volume of the street light. So the volume of the outer minus the volume of the inner is going to be equal to the volume of our street light. All right, let's do some calculations. Volume of the outside. Well, formula would be pi r squared h minus pi r squared h. So the outside, so pi times, we have a radius, the larger, of 31.6 squared times 840 for the height, minus the smaller cylinder is pi times the inner radius is 28.6 squared times 840. So this calculation to the left, let's leave it in terms of pi into the end. Okay, so we get 838,790.4 pi minus 687.086.4 pi. Now do the subtraction on the calculator and we get 476,592.1719. How much aluminum to the nearest cubic centimeter? Okay, whoops. We're not looking there, but where the two is, and to the right is a one, so we need approximately 4,076, uh, or 476,592 cubic centimeters.
guess I shouldn't stay so late <laughs> to record. All right, the last one. We're given two bottles of sunscreen below. How many times more sunscreen is in bottle B than bottle A? That's volume, okay? And then which is the better buy? So let's take a look at bottle A and bottle B. Bottle A, so on the left. Okay, these are in the shape of a pyramid. Okay, we have the rectangular base. Okay, rectangular base here as the dimensions are not the same. And the volume for a pyramid is one third area of the base. So it's going to be length times width times our height of the solid. The volume for the other pyramid is the same, one-third capital B, so length times width times the height of the pyramid. So the dimensions of bottle A are two by one for the base, so one-third, two times one, times our height of six. A third of six is two, and two times one gives us a volume of four cubic inches. And then here our dimensions are three by one and a half for the base. So volume is one third of three times 1.5. And this bottle has a height of four. A third of three is one. And four times one and a half is six. So the volume is six cubic inches. So to answer question A, how many times more sunscreen? Um, we take six divided by four, we get 1.5. So bottle B has one and a half times more sunscreen than bottle A. And then B, which is the better buy? So for bottle A, we're going to look at the cost, Let's draw a line here, for part B, we're going to look at the cost per volume, how much we're getting. So this bottle, okay, costs $9.96. So if we take $9.96 and divide it by a volume of four, we end up with a unit price of $2.49 per one cubic inch. Bottle B, um, or bottle, yep, bottle B rather, is a cost of fourteen forty. So if we take fourteen dollars and forty cents divided by six, we'll get a unit cost of two dollars and forty cents to one cubic inch. Putting the labels in there, inch cubed. Okay. So the unit cost for bottle B, okay, is two dollars and forty cents per one cubic inch, and that's less than bottle A. So to answer question B, I'm going to put it over here. The unit cost of bottle B is less than, and you can state that it's nine cents less than, is less than the unit cost of bottle a. Therefore, or so, bottle B is the better buy.